Now, I don't mean to brag, but the internet connection in my place is pretty good. Within a flash, I'm downloading another episode, I mean, another nature paper. <laughs> We're so used to quick connections that we get frustrated when streaming isn't instant. Imagine then how frustrating it would be if the buffering speed of your brain was impaired, not being able to process things quickly, feel or move properly. This is the reality for someone with multiple sclerosis. Just like an internet connection, our brains are made up of wires and connections too. And like a copper wire, the cables in our brain also have insulation wrapped around them in the form of myelin. And it's myelin that determines our brain's broadband speed. With it, messages can travel up to 100 times faster than a longer cable with no myelin. So it can make a big difference if our myelin gets damaged. Multiple sclerosis is the leading cause of acquired disability in young adults. And here in Scotland, we have amongst the highest prevalence for the disease worldwide. In MS, the body's immune system goes rogue and attacks the myelin, leading to compromised signaling speed, but also to neuronal death. This damage can be repaired by laying down new insulation onto the exposed cables. But ultimately, in MS, this process fails, and there are no treatments available to promote re-myelination. What's needed is a human model system to study myelin formation and translate these studies into effective therapeutics. I'm using human stem cells, the building blocks of life that, given the right ingredients, can be made into any cell in the body. We can make neurons and the cells that make myelin oligodendrocytes. But no matter how these cells have been sandwiched together in the past, nobody has been able to generate proper human myelin in a dish. During my PhD, I've developed a brand new model of myelination, where human stem cells are grown in a 3D sphere. These bundles of cells can be grown for several months in order to mimic the development of the human brain. In this 3D environment, oligodendrocytes interact with the nerve cells in a functional way. They grab hold of and tightly coil around the cables to form real myelin. This means that for the first time, we can ask whether certain drugs actually promote myelin formation in a human system. This will aid the expensive and inefficient process of drug discovery, help bring an MS therapy closer to the clinic, and bring super fast broadband back to MS patients. Thank you very much. <laughs>